being in coaching for such a long time, I, I have found out that assistant coaches are an important part of any any successful sports program, whether it be basketball, football, volleyball, uh, any that you can name. So over, over my many years at Ontario, I was very fortunate to have a great staff of coaches from our junior high coaches through our freshman JV and varsity assistants. Um, and I was really lucky that I had uh, several former players who were my junior high coaches over the years. So I uh, would like to give a shout out to these guys, Doug Carr, Ken Zahn, Chris Slowey, Andy Kurtz, Scott Sauer, Tyler Coley, and Parker Van Arsdale. And, uh, they were all really beneficial to me at the junior high level. But uh, with me today, I got three coaches who were really a key part of our year-long success uh, at Ontario. So uh, first, I have Tim Hennig, a longtime JV coach. Uh, Carl Schnitke, who played for me in my first year at Ontario. And then Nate Henderson, who kind of came in in the later years of uh, my coaching career. So um, as we've interviewed coaches for this show, I think always one of the interesting things is uh, for coaches to kind of tell people about their journey, how they got started, and then kind of how they got to where they were at uh, in our program. So, Tim, I'll let you talk first. I uh, went to undergrad at Bowling Green State University, and I was a social studies major, and I knew that it would be a lot of competition, so I, I sent out about 35 letters to schools around Bowling Green, uh, seeing if they needed coaches in North Baltimore. And Wood County responded, and I coached there as a college kid, and then I got my first teaching job at Ridgedale High School in Marion County, taught there two years. Uh, so that would have been 92, 93 into 94, and um, my then-girlfriend, now-wife, was working at the Ohio State branch out of Mansfield, and um, I wanted to get closer to here, applied at Ontario, and got the teaching job, introduced myself to who I thought was Coach Bailoff, <laughs> uh, that was embarrassing. And uh, so then volunteered for a couple years at, at the junior high and high school level, then started out as a seventh grade coach, freshman coach, and then transitioned into being the junior varsity coach where I did that for 25 plus years. So uh, that's how I ended up where I was coaching for this guy. Carl? Uh, after I got done playing in high school, I still was in the area, and I, I went up, and we all, all the guys that had graduated always went in and played against the kids that were in school, and I don't know, probably five, ten years of doing that, and uh, the eighth grade coach then was Doug Carr, and he kept trying to get me to coach seventh grade. He goes, oh, it's, it's fun. We practice together. He goes, parents don't ever complain. We're, it'll, be, it's, it'll be really good, and I don't know, probably about three or four years, I kept saying, nah, I don't think I want to do it. And I was still, I was scouting. I would go scout for Joe then. And then I started doing, started coaching and agreed to do it. And I coached about two years of seventh grade. And then Doug told me how fun it was going to be. And he left and took the girls' job. And then I was coaching the eighth grade for two years. And then I moved up to the freshman a couple years after that. And then about four or five years of doing that, I became one of the varsity assistants. Nate? Well, um, I graduated from Ohio University in 2006, and uh, with the power of the internet, I found a job in Galleon, Ohio, where I uh, was a teacher for six years, and I coached junior high basketball for, I think, three, freshman for two, and JV, I think, for one. And then um, ended up getting a job at Ontario, and really didn't know anything about Joe Baylog at all. Um, we were in the NOL. We really didn't play anybody in um, the NCC. And eventually, uh, after volunteering for the first year and kind of learned the ropes, it just kind of stuck with it. And I think I was on staff for nine years. So one of the, one of the parts of this, I think, we, we try to feature uh, some assistant coaches uh, in our interviews this year. We've talked to Dave Hershey. We talked to Buzz Coker at at uh, the girls, Amy's uh, assistant at Winford for a long time. So I think one of the things we try to do with this show is maybe try to get some information out. So, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of coaches that are maybe younger coaches, um, that are assistant coaches, maybe, maybe want to be head coaches, um, and maybe guys just want to be assistant coaches. But if you were maybe to give one or two things as, as an assistant coach that you would say, hey, these are things that you need to do to be a good assistant, 
Uh, what, what would some of those things be? I mean, I think w what made us unique is we weren't trying to be head coaches. You know, like I, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in leaving Ontario or leaving the program. So, you know, I, I think the number one thing I would tell young coaches is you got to be loyal to the head coach. You know, I'm not really on social media, but I know that's on fire with people, you know, ripping on coaches. And, and we would disagree. Like we would, after games, we would stay in the coach's office and sometimes we would stay for hours, especially after a loss. And we would hash it out in the office, but we would never, like once we left, it wasn't anything. It was never personal and it was never something that got shared outside the circle. So I would tell a young coach to just be loyal to the head coach regardless uh, because it'll take you farther than being one of those people out in the community that's causing trouble. I mean, especially with the social media the way it is now, I mean, if you say something against your head coach, I mean, it's going to come back. Yeah. I mean, there is no, no, oh, I didn't say that. I mean, it's going to come back. People are going to talk and it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of time. I mean, a lot of things you might question at the time, but as you do it longer and longer, you see where things, where that fits into making a team better. And I agree with what these guys said. Um, it, it's a lot of time, but what you do is in your title. Your job is to assist the main coach. And if that's filling up a water cooler, you fill up a water cooler, or if you gotta go, um, go down and help with maybe seventh grade basketball because their coach is out, then that's what you do. Um, uh, spent a lot of time in the weight room with the kids, but it, it, it's all about relationships. And um, the longer you're in it, that's really what it's about. And um, being out now for the last two or three years, that's probably what I miss the most, just being around the kids and the camaraderie that you have. And I think talking about the time is that um, we, we ran a program for years and years called Junior Warriors, and it would it was Saturday mornings, eight to nine thirty, and so if we had a road game where we got back at eleven o'clock, you know, we all came in and, and worked with those younger kids. I worked with uh, the third and fourth graders at our elementary school, and these guys would work with the older sixth, fifth, and sixth graders. And you have to do that, and, and you know, it's not an option of going, eh, "I don't feel like it today," because that's that's how you really su sustain success is that those things because it kind of feeds itself as the program those kids age into the program. And, and, I, and speaking from a head coach's standpoint, I think one of the things with assistants is um, none of these guys were really like yes guys. I mean, like, if I put something out, it was like, hey, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. Um, if they disagreed, they would let me know that they disagreed. But I think Tim, Tim made the, the, a great point was, was that stuff stayed, stayed within us. And, you know, there were times there were, there were times that I'm sure they walked out of a coach's office after a game, weren't real happy with me. And I know there were times I walked out of a coach's office and weren't really happy with maybe what they said. But I think the job of an assistant also is to make a head coach think. And, and, and if you have a suggestion, if you're, if you're adamant about it, I think that you need to continue to be adamant about it. But again, I think the important part is, as a staff, that's why we called it a coaching staff, it stays within that staff, and that, that's important. Um, and I think you also, Tim, you elaborated on something that's really important about building a program is it starts. It, it starts, you know, you mentioned the third and fourth, and then, you know, we, we ran the camp in the summer, um, the, old, the old warrior basketball camp. There's so. always this kind of a funny story. So, you know, did those little kids camps every summer for years and years and years. And I, I don't remember, I live in Ontario, so you know, you'd go to Walmart or whatever, and I would have kids come up to me and go, hey, Coach Baylog, how are you? And I'd be like, hey, <laughs> you know, you just kind of go with it. But um, I, I thought, I think the three of us would agree, our job was to make his job easier so that he could really focus on, you know, game, game days and prepping our kids for games. So. Um, you know, we did laundry, and he did laundry too, of course, but you know, our, our responsibilities maybe weren't, you wouldn't see him on game night, but there would be things like, one of my jobs was to recruit managers for, uh, for game nights, and that always, that always became an issue, especially finding a filmer was always challenging, so now they have the huddle cameras uh, at every gym, which makes it easier, but that would be a struggle to find kids to, but that's just a part of my responsibilities were to get a filmer every year. So you just did that and that was part of my response, you know, my job, I guess. 
Well, we'll give you a chance here as, as we've kind of discussed, but over the, over the years of coaching, there, there are many, many stories. So um, I give, give you guys an opportunity that if you'd like to share, share any stories about being an assistant in the Ontario basketball. I'll leave my number so that you can you guys can text me the real stories. Uh, we're going to keep it family oriented here. I mean, I just think the the memories were the my first year at Ontario. We made it to Columbus, and um, so I figured we'd do that every year, and uh, we didn't. But you know that that was a big a, a memory. But the, Bill Walsh once said that the losses hurt more than the wins feel good, and I think you know we would the, the Winford game in 2001 when half court hook shot to win the district winford hit one just the uh, patrick henry in the regional finals in 97 losing by two that those are unfortunately the losses stick with you but just the memories of the kids like you said the relationships that we still see kids we get invited to weddings and things like that of former players those are probably the memories i have most i mean the games all run together it's more of the things that in the coach's office or the relationships with the kids. I mean, you know, there's there's so many kids now that you see and it's, hey coach, hey coach. And now, when my daughter's in eighth grade, I would say there's like four or five parents there that I coached, that their kids are the same age. And it's after every game they're like well what do you think we should do what do you think we should do and I'm like I'm not there every day I can't <laughs> I can't I can give ideas but I, if, if I'm not there every day I can't really tell that <laughs> <laughs> so I get go a, ahead Nate I got a story from for Joseph here and uh, we were supposed to be scouting I think we're scouting Willard at New Regal <laughs> <laughs> And we get in the car, and it's me and Joe, we drive to New Regal, and we pull up to the high school, it's about 7.15. There's not a single car in the parking lot. Not a single car. I turn and look at Joe, I go, Joe, I thought there's a game. He goes, oh no, and now he might not have said, oh no. <laughs> I think we checked Davey one real quick. The game is at Willard. The game is not at New Regal at all. So we drive 45 minutes to New Regal, no game. I think it's snowing out. Yep. It's getting worse and worse. We eventually come back through and we go into downtown Desires and we go to get a, a pizza before the end of the night at Makers. And we could barely even see where the yellow line is on the road. And we're thought we're in a parking, we think we're in a parking spot on the side of the road. And I don't think we, we think we might have been halfway in the middle of the road. <laughs> Some car drives by us and just starts beeping and yelling at us because we just seemed like the out-of-towners at the time. And I tell you what, we did a lot of scouting, a lot of scouting. And this guy was the king of going to games. He'd leave practice at 6 o'clock, drive an hour and go to a game. Um, but that was really critical to our success, yeah. knowing the names of the plays. And sometimes you can't get that on film, so the scouting was key to be able to hear what the plays were called, especially out of bounds plays. But uh, now nah, there's something like going to see a game, and there's no game. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that usually actually probably happened like once a, a year. I, I can go back to a to a guy that uh, maybe I, I forgot to mention was was Scott Manahan, mm -hmm. uh, who's you know, a Hall of Fame uh, high school baseball coach, and now the head head baseball coach at Capital. Uh, um, I think every year that he coached for me as a freshman, um, he would come back and he goes, uh, hey, you did it again. He goes, uh, I drove to Ridgedale and there wasn't a game. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, first of all, I appreciate you guys coming in. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, truly a blessing that, you know, we've been able to have this relationship uh, over all these years. And I think, like you said, Carl, you know, I have kids come up to me and they're like, hey, you remember this game? And I'm like, I try to like remember, but it all kind of comes together. But what's what is the neat thing is, you know, kids that you coached three or four years ago, 15 years ago, and in my case, 30 some years ago, um, you still have relationships with those guys because uh, I guess what we did, you know, may, maybe meant something to what what they were able to accomplish, you know, down, down the road. So uh, uh, glad you guys could come in and, you know, hopefully for the people watching tonight, you get a little bit of an idea as, what it means to have a coaching staff and the importance of having really good assistance in your program.